Welcome to our new series where Zach and Bree try to train a puppy while traveling across North America. I've completely given up on training this dog right now. Today, our location is Liberal, Kansas, population 19,000. Home to natural gas refineries, rolling farmlands, and seemingly abandoned fairgrounds. I think we hit the jackpot. We were on the road, we decided to stop for a couple of nights, and I think I might have just discovered dog trainer heaven. Bree, who is that? I'm your personal dog chef, and I'm making the most exquisite creation for you. Thousands of dollars? Well, you know, the cost of teleportation is out of control these days. At least it's probably cheaper than gas. I'm very qualified, as you can see. No doubt, fresh food is definitely appreciated by people and their dogs. Chef Pom Pom, uh, couldn't you pre-portion this and freeze it so I always have it whenever I need it? I did carefully craft this meal to your dog's specific age, breed, and weight. Right, but I thought you were going to portion it out and ship it in an ice-cold box to me. I see what's happened. You meant to order Nom Nom. Nom Nom is designed by actual dog nutrition experts to be as perfect as possible for your dog. They're actually giving half off a two-week trial of their extremely fresh dog food. Next time you talk to them, could you please give them my resume? Go to trynom.com slash Zach and use my discount code Zach. I'll have a link below. We've got to explore this awesome fairgrounds. It is too good to be true. We have this entire place to ourselves. And there must be some great opportunities for the dogs to become better canine citizens. I'm just not sure what they are yet. I'm looking behind me, I see carnival rides that have been taken down basically or whatever for the fair. I don't know what they are. The point I'm trying to make is when you come to a place like this, there's going to be something new that they see at a pretty high rate that's really gonna benefit them in the long run or it's gonna make them crazy. I mean, even right now, look at Inertia. She's very well socialized. She's looking up here and she's like, wait a minute. I've never seen a roof where pigeons burrow. I think they're pigeons. What if they're doves? I don't know. Never actually walked both dogs together. But since there's a nice wide open area here, I think we can practice walking them together and see how that goes. Right. Oh, this is an amazing building over here. Look at this. Oh, cool. I want to go check this out. OK. There's a plaque for you. Ah, we love plaques. 1937. Oh, this is so cool. Very uncanny valley. Yep. How's it going walking both dogs? Uh, go walking both dogs is kind of a disaster so far, but I don't care so much because I really just want them to walk around and sniff. So if you were a person yeah. who was one person, not a couple, right? and you had these two dogs, yeah. do you have any advice for yourself? <laughs> Good you know I mean? luck. There's something that feels so much harder about walking two dogs together because it's like one of them gets a little excited or the other one gets a little excited. But when they're together, they're like, well, you're excited too. What are we excited about? It feels like they kind of like feed off of each other. Do keep in mind though, this is a free walk. So I want both dogs to feel fairly liberated to explore and smell and do their own thing, even if they are a little bit chaotic on leash. Imagine trying to walk Veronica and Inertia together and training yeah. Veronica to be good on leash. Is that is that possible? Yeah, sure it's possible. I would do exactly what I'm doing right now. Just get them comfortable with the environment first. To me, it's not the most pleasant experience when you're trying to force a dog to just pay attention because you want them to. It's more important for them to satisfy their curiosity. You might notice how Veronica is pulling and lunging and going here and going there and everything. Inertia did the same thing and I posted all of it on the internet. Let's see how she's just pulling ahead. I don't like that. At all. I had a good half of the internet saying, you can't train a dog. Why would you allow them to do such a thing? My arm is sore just trying to restrain her there. But before I can expect them to walk nicely on leash, I want them to understand the world. And the way they understand the world is by experiencing it. <laughs> but you know how we're always saying, train five, 10 seconds at a time. <laughs> hey, Veronica. Here, come. Yes. On a free walk like this, though, I'm still going to call Good them and girl. make sure that I yes. reinforce them coming to me when I call them or any other number of things. So they're like rides that are broken down. Yeah, it looks like it. Scary. The cliffhanger. That looks awesome. Oh, we got a big semi-truck coming through. I've hardly seen any traffic here. Now there's that big truck. But what a good training opportunity for Veronica. Let's let Veronica check it out. Let's see what she does. Does she notice it? Does she care? Yep, she notices it, but I'm going to let her observe it. I mean, she starts to vocalize and get a little bit concerned, but I kind of want to play this out. Yes! 
hey, I like that you just sat right there. I'm trying to assess, is she anxious? Does she wanna play? I think it might be a combination of everything. Either way, I love that she's looking to me for direction right now. And that's the thing, it's not about like training your dog to stay when they see a truck, it's about showing them what the truck is so that they know how to make sense of it and so that they can adjust to something strange like that. That's why for this walk, I've completely given up on training this dog right now. It's all about Veronica and letting her do what she wants to do right now. Yes. Within reason. Half the barking we dealt with last night was random sounds that she had no idea what they were. I mean, for all she knew, they were spirits from the underworld coming to take her. Hey, Poles a lot. Look at you. I know, there's that belief by many, even amongst my peers, that man, if you allow that pulling, it can get out of control. If you do it without total regard, sure it can, but the compromise I've made is socialization trumps proper leash walking at this age. And to me, I just don't think it's really reasonable to insist on perfect focus from a four or five month old puppy when there's so much else that is important to them. Even though I really try to avoid asking for too yes. much on walks like these, I still definitely want Want to be here to let Veronica know that I love it every time she voluntarily gives me her attention. Seriously, if you want your dog to pay attention to you, try this. I think you might be shocked at how much it helps to get your dog in the habit of listening to you overall. I'm so happy that our dog Inertia, our older dog, is at a place where we can really take advantage of a location like this for next level training for her. Yeah, me too, because that has definitely not always been the case. It's so nice to finally be able to just like train her and play frisbee with her in this field. It's significant because this is a brand new location and she's listening very well. Inertia and I have a strong enough foundation that I feel confident in trusting her here. Okay, look, I know this place isn't fancy and there's not beautiful streams or amazing nature to look at, but you guys, it's empty right now and it feels like it's all ours. And that's exactly what I want right now. And just to be transparent, I'm still really methodical about letting inertia off leash in these places. So I like to measure her compliance ahead of time. Come, lie down, stay. I'll ask for some basic things, a lie down, a sit. Will she chase a Frisbee? Is she focused on me? And if those things add up, then I usually feel pretty confident that she's gonna be reliable in that particular scenario. And if she appeared even slightly distracted by something or wasn't paying attention to me, it's back on leash instantly. You know, that truck right there, there's no way two years ago I would have trusted her in this situation. I don't think she would have ran in the road, but it's more about the proofing. It's more about the practice. And remember, proofing is where we practice skills that our dogs know in various contexts and places. Yeah, dogs are so context sensitive. That is something I did not fully understand before I knew you. This is an example of proofing. So a nurse's heel training has been doing good. You know, heels where they stay by your side like this and you can walk. Let's see, switch. See how her left heel is doing. Well done. Lie down, stand, come around. That deserves a reward. Lie down. So here we have a car coming, you know, unexpected. I want to be able to have her in a reliable down stay. That's exactly what I'm talking about. One of the things that has helped me train her to be more and more reliable off leash over time has been playing fetch with her. That's her love language. So she really enjoys it. A dog like Inertia is amazing when she's exercised. And when she's not, she's pretty high maintenance. That's true of a lot of dogs, I think. She's really focused out here and I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Can you give me a sit, pretty? By exercising inertia like this, she is just the best behaved dog ever. And because we have this whole place to ourselves, I think it's a great day to plant the seeds for off-leash training with Veronica. I mean, the level of distractions for Veronica, it's just enough, I feel, where she can start to break new ground and learn, oh yeah, I listen to you when that thing is going on or this thing is happening. When we're off-leash training, we go to the field and we take off her leash, right? And then nope. we see what she'll well, do. What? Bree, bree, bree. Veronica has to go through a lot of training before I'm gonna let her off leash like we did with Inertia just now. Okay, right. Okay, kissy sound didn't work. Veronica! Here, come. Yes! Good, very good. Surely a piece of dog treat is gonna be more interesting than a twig, right? <laughs> Veronica! Yes, well done, good decision. 
I'm gonna keep it moving a little. I wanna see if she kind of follows me. I'm trying to teach Veronica that just staying near me, whether yes. I call her or there not, is the best way to get all of the wonderful things that she wants. See, this resembles more of a real world context for come when called, Let's unlike go. the more set up introductory sessions that we've done in the past. Sit. Yes. This is the missing link for most people, and this is what they're not doing if they're having problems getting their dog to listen to them in new places, that is. Here. Things I'm doing to try and keep this yes. successful. I'm keeping my energy up. I'm making sure that every time Good she comes girl. to me, it's paying off. And so far, it's proving pretty effective. Here. And never underestimate the power of preventing your dog from running away in the first place. That's my favorite. Yes. I wanted her to think about that sit for a moment. Veronica. Good. Here. Yes. So you might be wondering there what you're saying. Good, you're not giving her a treat sack. What's going on? As a reminder, good is, hey, you're on the right track. And after enough goods, you might earn a yes. And yes is the word that she's really working for to get a reward in these early stages right here. Let me call her away from the distraction. Yes. Good girl. And that's good. I think a lot of people when they see our videos like this. They're like, Zach, you've got eight hours a day to train a dog. I don't have that kind of time. But honestly, really, with a dog like Veronica, you're lucky to get 10 minutes at a time of focused training out of her. So like 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening or great reminder sessions like we've done here. And then the moments that happen throughout the day are all about taking those 30 seconds out of time to implement in a real life context, drawing upon those training sessions, what they've learned and spending time with them there. Getting some nice zoomy action in. Veronica is still not approved to be off leash for some time in an uncontrolled environment. How much longer does my puppy have to stay on lead? Minimum of two years. People are in such a hurry to let their dog off lead. Imagine letting a two-year-old human being out of your custody and imagine that they could run 35 miles an hour. That's the caveat. <laughs> Veronica is as fast as a greyhound, I swear. There is a 0% chance I will catch her if she does not want to be caught. Huge noob mistake is letting your dog off leash too early, particularly in uncontrolled environments where you have no recourse. Personally, I feel like that's your number one dog training tip of all time. In my experience, if you go out of your way to show your dog the world over a 24 month time frame, that's really the minimum. I even really consider letting a dog off leash. Come at me. Maybe I should do a frisbee lesson with her. Would you? I would love that. Yeah. Veronica. And with Veronica, I'm gonna continue to follow my standard protocol of prioritizing a structured game of fetch intermixed with her general overall training. But it looks like her fetch structure still needs some work. She's kind of intermittent with Frisbee, but sometimes she'll chase it and not bring it back. Depends on her mood a lot. Here. While Veronica has shown strong interest in playing, it looks like at this particular moment, for whatever reason, I'm asking a bit much of her. I mean, you can see that she gives the disc a look, but that's the second time she hasn't brought it back or grabbed it at all. I'm not gonna roll it a third time here. I need to take a step back and kind of spell things out for her. Part of getting her interest in Frisbee has been making it interesting, letting her have it, not just playing tug and keeping it from her. Let me make it more exciting there. Good girl! <laughs> yeah, good girl. You know, the fact that she came to me there always is more important than her bringing it back in the beginning. Because come when called, you know, if you look at the hierarchy of skills they need to have is way up there. So yes, good. As she gets into this, she's going to probably start bringing it back. I'll shorten the distance there so it's easier. Good, that turn. Whoa! YouTube, are you okay? As the camera was falling there, you probably saw Veronica not just chase the Frisbee, but actually pick it up and turn around to face me. That's a big step in the right direction, and it's a great place to stop while Veronica is still feeling excited about that disc. I think the dogs are adapting to trailer life pretty good here so far. We've worked out with them, and they're really doing a great job. They've had their exercise, and now they're relaxed. And that is how we get a well-behaved dog. I'm telling you guys, I got this whole dog training thing completely figured out. There's a tractor. Her barking. She does bark a lot. Zach George, how do you get your new puppy to stop barking? 
does not know what to do with herself. Rather than trying to redirect Veronica's attention onto me, I really just want her to kind of satisfy her curiosity, let her bark for a little bit if that's what makes her happy. I feel like that's controversial. I don't know, I kind of try to see it from their perspective. Like, we're throwing so much on her for being a new dog, so if she sees something that causes her to bark, I'm gonna let her bark for a second then I'll address it. I like to think of it as situational awareness for dog training. We have different criteria for different dogs based on their current experience level and their personality and all sorts of other things. Hey, you know, we're, we're on again. Then during that moment of silence that occurs naturally, I try to get her attention on me. And again, remind her that when you feel uncertain about things, you can always look to me and I'm going to be able to give you some good feedback. Yes, so good example. <laughs> Waiting for quiet. Yes. Now can I get her down? Can I get her brain thinking, hey, let me do something else here? By having her lie down and pay attention to me, that's incompatible with looking at something out of the window and barking at it. To a reasonable enough degree. Can you relax? So yeah, I mean, this is what we're dealing with. We have to do this several times a day. And that's part of having a dog, you know? You show them consistently how you want them to behave. Understand things from their perspective. Like, hey man, this is all weird. This is different. The view outside of those windows is constantly changing in this case. And in her case, she's never seen a tractor. She doesn't know what that is. That's weird. I appreciate that you're alert and curious, Veronica. Good job being quiet, Inertia. You've seen plenty of tractors, huh? I mean, the thing is, I wish it was only tractors that she was barking at. Yes, but even Veronica makes Veronica bark. <laughs> that can make editing our videos very complicated sometimes. Yeah. Oh, no, barkception. That's your own self barking. It's normal, because it's you. That's all right, that's normal. Did you hear that, though? I think she's making an effort to bark more quietly. That's progress. Yeah, I think she's trying. Good girl, that's quiet. Very good, Veronica. Even though I didn't use a treat or a chew or a reward here, that doesn't mean I'm done rewarding her. I'm just rewarding her a little bit less than I was before when she complies with me. But given the severity of those particular outbursts and then her recovery from them, I think I probably would have chosen to reinforce that with something that she likes. But I see what you're saying, though. Well, I'm trying to phase out the rewards, but you're right. I bet it's probably too early because she is still barking a whole lot. Yeah, I would try to reinforce a good 90% of compliant behavior when she does subside on the barking or when you detect that she's resisting it. That's just my opinion. But there's more than one right answer. This is one of the reasons I harp on exercise so much because I've got work to do and dogs are very content. The peaceful atmosphere was so nice while it lasted, but it did not last very long at all. What is going on out there? We've got some kind of drama going on here. There's these giant trailers pulling in next to us. And Ursula's like, well, what's going on? I see Bree out there who's on a putty break with Veronica. And they're talking. Now, you and I were separated when this happened, but I'm dying to get your perspective on this because everyone can see mine. We had a whole field to ourselves, but not anymore. I'm sure we'll get the scoop. What do you think they're talking about? Looks like Bree has it under control. Uh-oh. It looks like they've called in the big boss on Bree. Inertia and I are just gonna hang out in here. We're under siege. I think Bree's telling him, hey, get out of here. I kind of was. You can't stay here. This is our spot. Pretty sure that's exactly what she's saying. Well, not exactly, but yeah, kind of. And he's saying, I'm going to put her right there and you just need to deal with it. That is almost exactly what he said. And then she's saying, no, go away. I was, but I had a reason. And Veronica is all like, what's going on? All right. You tell them, Brie. Now, if I know Brie, and I do, because she is a very capable and smart, strong woman, she's probably coming back to tell me that they're moving out and we have the entire area to ourselves once again, right? What happened? That's a carnival. That's a carnival? Yeah, and I asked them to move. And they were like, but I'm a carnival and I've been here for 15 years. And I was like, well, those ladies in the office said I could ask you to move. And it seemed like they thought maybe these guys were in the wrong place. 
And you were just trying to help them understand that. Well, they were like, go tell them to move. And I was like, are you sure? And they were really insistent that I should try this. And so I did. And I accidentally made you TikTok's next big Karen by posting this. Yeah. It has over a quarter million views. The fairgrounds people told me to do that, I swear. I thought they were going to have enough space to give us more room. How long is the carnival going to be here? All week, so I think we're going to have to go. It wasn't on the calendar. OK, so this is happening. We're sleeping with the carnival. It's a pretty novel experience. Definitely not what I expected to be doing tonight. Yeah, we thought it was a good idea to go and see what was out there before it got dark. That's what those rides were about earlier. Oh. <laughs> Y'all got to see this part in the wind, but we just got taken over. It appeared that at least one of these workers had a dog with them. Yes. That was off leash and not supervised. And look, we know what we're getting into. We're going to be in public an awful lot over the next many weeks. It's on us to protect our dogs right. from potentially hazardous situations, like random off-leash dogs running up to you. When I don't know the dog, I just pick my own dog up until I've had a chance to assess. But priority one, keep the dog safe. We just got rushed by this dog over here. It's OK, honey. It's like selling everything. Granted, we're in a pretty rural area, but I don't know anything about that dog. Could have been the friendliest dog in the world, but... And he was running up to Veronica, who is a snack and a half. Yeah, and I'll assume no, he wants to He's play, new. but I don't, since I don't know that, there's, you know, I'm not playing that game. Good um, job. You all right? <laughs> that scared me a little bit. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it happens all the time. I know. So after tonight, we're apparently getting evicted. Not only did they not go away, they told us we have to go away. I'm just saying, I have a lease. This is my receipt. $30 for two nights. It's actually in my name. It's in Brianna's name, but that's cool, man. That's cool. We're, we're homeless again. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, after tomorrow, we have no place to go, but um, it's my choice. Yes. Right now, I honestly have no idea what is coming our way, but I guess click subscribe. We'll find out together. Check out Nom Nom. It is the freshest dog food available, and it is great. Check us out on TikTok, even Instagram too, and get both of my books if you're a person that likes to read. Or get my audiobooks if you're a person who likes to listen. Yeah, Zach narrated them, his very own self. All the links are below. See you soon. Yeah, we gotta go somewhere.